My understanding is that a lot of people in the North Korean military have heard me talk about my military turning into dictators and talking about how the military swears to defend the Constitution of the United States, and they don't really understand how that's a problem because they come from a dictatorship. And uh, just, just a few videos ago, I don't know how long ago I said it, but I said that my understanding is that North Korea is secular. And I said that because I don't feel like they're really people that believe in God, but it's, it's weird that I would say that because um, I'm actually pretty sure they're a theocracy. Um, under Kim Jong-il, they worshiped him. Um, they thought he was a god. Um, under Kim Il-sung, I, I believe it was the same thing, and he's who actually founded the modern North Korea, Kim Il-sung. Kim Il-sung was actually a very brilliant man. Um, he was concerned with the welfare of his people. He was trying to do what's best for his people. But Kim Il-sung did not have access to as much information as um, Kim Yo-jong Yo does. And uh, Cho Sung, isn't that his name, Cho Sung? Um, Cho, uh, I don't know if I should call him that. I, I never know which name to use. <laughs> we'll just call him Cho. Um, Cho, um, my understanding is that he was born into a very powerful Korean family, but he isn't very power hungry. He's the type of person that just wants to live in South Korea if South Korea was atheist. But at the same time, Cho grew up admiring Kim Jong-il because Kim Jong-il was the hero of Korea. Like he was God to everyone. The entire military thinks it thought this guy is God. So they actually had a theocracy odd enough. But Kim Jong-il is dead now and then Kim Jong-un kind of inherited that power. But here's the thing about both Kim Jong-il and Kim Jong-un. Okay, so when you're born into a dictatorship, like when, when your father's a king and you have no rules and you have unlimited power and you have witnessed someone that murders whenever, and I, I'm referring to Kim Jong-il, um, but Kim Il-sung actually had to kill people too because he was, in a, he was living in a very volatile time, but Kim Jong-il actually killed people um, not because he needed it. He killed people because he wanted to, because he had bloodlust. Um, but Kim Jong-il, was worshiped passionately by his people. They, they, I'm pretty sure they still worship him. I mean, Kim Jong-il was one of the best propaganda artists of all time. Kim Jong-il can shoot like in the 60s in golf. Kim Jong-il is the best at everything. Like there's no one in the world that's better than Kim Jong-il according to the Korean people because he lied to him so much. But Kim Jong-un apparently was gonna be like that. But the problem is Kim Jong-un was also raised with no rules like Kim Jong-il was. Kim Jong-il, had a father that was good. Kim Jong-un had a father that really believed in killing. And um, Kim Jong-un was kind of like, you know, if, you're, if you've seen this show on Hulu about Catherine the Great, where Peter kills this bear, he just to be mean. Kim Jong-un is a mean person. And what I'll tell you is Kim Jong-un is not, and Cho is not, uh, he, he's, if there's anybody in the world that just wants to not die, if there's anything Cho understands, is me, because I just don't want to die. And he just doesn't want to die. And he's like, why the hell do I have to live in this freaking world where this guy is such a freaking spoiled brat that's in charge of my freaking country and all, and he's got this thing, he just wants to fight the Americans, but he doesn't understand. He has a tiny little population with no weapons, but his father, Kim Jong-il, had people starving in his country because he bought all these old Soviet weapons that they never used. They still have these old ass weapons. They've never freaking used in Korea. They, they're never gonna use them. They're getting new weapons. They're making new weapons. They're never gonna use their old ones, but Kim Jong-il let his people die because he needed these stupid freaking weapons because he was gonna go fight South Korea, but South Korea has doubled the population combined with the United States. But he's like, well, I'm on China's side. But then China was like, at least when Kim Jong-il was like, China was not China. China now is different. China now is powerful. All right, so the reason Americans hate dictators is because a lot of the time when you're a dictator, your children turn out bad. But fortunately for Kim Yo-jong, her father didn't, he wasn't as involved with her as Kim Jong-un. And she just doesn't have a mean spirit. She's not a mean person. And yeah, she, she, you can watch her, watch what she says 
about, oh, I'll, kill, I'll go to war with South Korea, whatever, even though you have twice my population, I'll go to kill, I'll kill you guys. Um, but um, you can hear her say that, but it doesn't mean she's mean. It's that she thinks she's doing what is best for her country. She's trying to do what's best for her country. And that's the difference between Kim Yo-jong and Kim Jong-un. You know, I talked about how I got hacked after I, I, I threatened to nuke North Korea. What, what actually happened is North Korea threatened to shoot a missile at our aircraft carrier. And what I said is, well, if you shoot a missile at our aircraft carrier, there will be no such thing as North Korea anymore. There will be uh, Korea in the south, and then there will be land of the mutant mole people in the north. Because I will nuke every single inch of North Korea. And some people, like Cho and Cho's father, heard me say that and went, oh, wait, that, that actually, uh, you could do that. And um, Kim Jong-un heard that and went, Oh yeah, well I'll go fight the country like a million times bigger than me and a million times more powerful. And like, you know, when you come from a theocracy and then you go see this guy who just so happens to be a clone and his religion's 2000 years old and your religion's like 50 years old. I mean, it, it should have clicked in someone's head, at least Kim Jong-un's head, apparently it didn't because this guy has bloodlust and everyone around it, like everyone that works with him in the military and in the, in the North Korean government just wants to live. They don't want this guy to murder him. It's not even about like, I don't, I want what's best for my people, which I mean, I think a lot of people in North Korea want what's best for their people. But sometimes when a guy is like murderous, um, you're more worried about like your, your immediate life. And so uh, that's my, my, that's my understanding of the situation. And my understanding is that Kim Jong-un was like Kim Jong-il, but worse. And Kim Jong-il had a plan. Wait, no, Kim Jong-un had a plan to kill, um, uh, Matt, uh, Matt, what is his name? Matt Stone and, and Trey Parker from South Park, the funniest people alive. There's, they don't have a single person in, in either Korea. That's as funny as either one of them. Those are the two funniest men, men in the United States. And I understand, like you say, well, he made fun, Team America makes fun of Kim Jong-il because he's so lonely. Well, you know, it makes fun of dictators, yes, because uh, the United States has problems with, has a serious problem with dictators, and that's why Trey Parker and Matt Stone have a problem with dictators. But it also makes fun of the United States because it's making fun of the, the way that the Bush administration did foreign policy, where they just went out and killed people. Like, wow, this is great foreign policy. People won't hate us. It's not like, it's not like Kim Jong-un will hate us because of Kim Il-sung. It's like, it's like, I mean, and don't get me wrong, Kim Il-sung actually had a real reason to hate us because we invaded Korea. When I talk about our soldiers going in there dying like crazy, you don't understand, the Marines invaded, was it on the West Coast, Southwest, and the, it got real bad because they had this really arrogant guy in charge of the United States uh, of, their, of their military. Um, I can't remember who it was. He was so freaking arrogant. And then this other guy just like, he kept trying to explain it to him. Like, you don't understand the situation, but he, it just wouldn't click in his head. And that's why our soldiers kept dying. Like that's, that's my understanding of the American side is that we had this incredibly arrogant commander on the ground that got our soldiers killed like crazy in Korea. Um, and I mean, it, this is the thing about democracy is that everyone wants to pick someone who's flashy and cool and has a gold throne and is a con artist because he makes a lot of money. That's who they want for president because he's awesome. But in reality, what you need is a guy that understands like the Vietnam War and that some people might still hate us. Wait, no, Vietnam can't still hate you. You guys don't get it, dude. You, you will never freaking understand. That was like five days ago. Do you have any idea? Dude, we were just bombing the shit out of Vietnam. We bombed the forest. We killed whoever was out there. We didn't bomb the cities, but still. We, we dropped Agent Orange. People would still get cancer from that shit. It's still in the soil. Like, I mean, people don't understand. Like, we have enemies for a reason. There's a reason Osama bin Laden hated us. I've read all of everything that Osama bin Laden wrote or, 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 all, or the transcripts of the videos or whatever. And what you conclude is that he thinks the United States committed mass murder in Iraq during the first Gulf War under George Bush Sr. But, the, I mean, uh, Americans think Saddam Hussein invaded um, Kuwait and we are defending Kuwait because Kuwait is our ally and the oil in Kuwait is important. And Saddam Hussein has never really been, had, never had a, he was a dictator. He was a person that had no rules. He could do anything he wanted. Like anything he said goes. And what I'm telling you is people like me 
know how much we don't want dictators. Do you know my entire life I haven't had money? And like, I, I mean, there's no one in the world that has had so, like every dime planned for him. During college, I used to donate plasma, big ass needles. It hurt like hell, so I eventually stopped. But um, I had so little money, I was getting like 35 bucks for sitting there with a freaking giant needle in my arm for like an hour or something. And um, I have never had money. Why? Because I wasn't old enough to have money. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't mature enough. Sometimes when you're young and you have everything, it's really bad, especially when your father says, you can do anything you want, anything. And like, and, 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 and I mean, if you're a man, I'm pretty sure you're taught very different than a woman because women, um, men don't tell, tell women you can do anything you want. <laughs> you, can go, you can go fuck everyone. Like, and men don't do that. I mean, women have different roles. It doesn't matter what society you are in. Women have a different role than men, especially in the state of nature. Um, all right. So, um, I don't know what's happening. My understanding is that if people find out that Kim Jong-un is dead, then some people are concerned about the possibility that um, they're going to go try to kill... Um, whoever, but um, what I will tell you is you should want a leader who isn't mean. It's not about a smiling photo op. You should want someone without a mean spirit. You want, you want someone who's going to freaking care if someone's starving. You want someone who's going to be like, all right, oh, you're starving? I might not need to buy some freaking mortar shells that I'm never going to freaking use because logically, mathematically, there's no way, but he's got this irrational fear because of the Korean war. That's the thing. Kim Jong-il had an irrational fear because of the Korean war, but it was rational. It was based on something. It's because the Korean war happened. These people, these white people from out of nowhere, from the other side of the world came in and invaded our country. Um, but I don't know. Um, I think North Korea Someday, if Kim Yo Jong wants a real legacy, and Cho wants a, a Cho Sung wants a real legacy, then um, I would want a constitution, and I would want my people to be protected from the government after I'm gone, and and that's why every single us white folks that have been around on different planets where we live in a country, every freaking country we live in, we have a constitution, we have protection from the government. Like our, our whole way that our government is set up is so that the people are protected. And um, that's because we care about more than ourselves. And we care about more than just staying in power. And we understand that there, like you can still have an incredibly strong army without um, without being a dictator. <laughs>